It's a well-known observation that no one likes alarms. No one likes alarms because they disturb the peace. They disturb one's quietude, one's zend out nature. So anyone sounding an alarm of any kind is going to be disliked just for that reason alone by the multitudes, by the majority. No one likes alarms, essentially. That's just a general fact. That can't really be disputed at all. So the one sounding an alarm of any kind, well, that's someone to dislike, someone to hate even. Who is this person sounding an alarm? Why are they disturbing my sleep? I'm in a deep state of slumber. Isn't that obvious? And yeah, it's very obvious that the majority are in a very deep state of slumber and they don't want that peace disturbed in any way. So someone comes along and starts shaking them. Well, yeah, that person doing the shaking, well, that's an enemy. That's enemy number one right there. It doesn't matter who they are. Can't you see I was asleep? I have a spell put on me. And I'm in this deep, deep state of slumber. And I don't want to be woken up. So now you've done that. You've wrecked my sleep. What for? And of course that question is going to get asked. What for? Why did you wake me up? Why are you shaking me like this? But of course, it can't be seen by the one who's still in that state of sleepiness. They might just fall back asleep immediately. You could have aroused them for a moment, but it's so easy to fall back into that same state of sleep again. That's the point. So... When one is trying to rouse others, it takes a lot of that to make the other aware that this is not a state of sleep that you want to stay stuck in. So I'm here to shake you awake completely until you realize what's going on. And this is also part of what I meant in my last message by... Going into silence, not being distracted by the weapons of mass distraction, which are just enshrouding every individual as much as possible, keeping them in that state of sleep. And when you're remaining in that state of sleep and not going into true silence, which is to be able to listen to the heart, you're not hearing the message And that message is one of alarm. That's the point. So when you finally hear that message, you become disquiet. That's what ends up happening. But no one wants to have that feeling because, of course, it's linked with things like anxiety. It's linked with things like an impending sense of doom. So it's anything but zend out. One wants to just remain calm. Calm forever. Calm as death. See, the most calm thing in all of reality is death. Death is as calm and zend out as it gets. Just visit a graveyard. It is completely peaceful. That's as peaceful as it gets death there you go so yeah who wants an alarm to be sounded for the impending doom of something like death well no death needs to be welcomed with open arms says death of course that's what death and its messengers keep telling you just remain calm remain distracted Look at all my weapons of mass distraction instead. Don't listen to anyone sounding any alarms. They're disrupting the peace. That's why I have peace officers everywhere. They're the ones keeping the peace in the land of death. 
And that's exactly what this whole reality is set up as. It is a land of death. That's something I'm going to get into in the next little while and exactly the reasons why, even symbolically. It's so obvious. It's again just slapping everyone in the face. But who's paying attention? Just too many fun distractions. Too much to be entertained by. Too many pleasures to enjoy, especially physical pleasures of the devil's suit. Just have fun with your suit. That's what it's there for. It's just a little experience. And then death will welcome you into its arms again. Yeah, I guess if that's how one wants to perceive it, then that's all this place is. That's it, just a little vibrational experience. And you're the creator of it. Go into the hubris of that. It's <laughs> just absolutely ridiculous. I am the source. What a joke. No, none of us as individuals caught as slaves in this system are the source. As I said, we've been given a small piece of the kingdom, which is our inheritance, but we are not the source. See, we've been given a small piece by the ultimate source, by the true creators. That's what's happened. But you, yourself as an individual, including me, are not the source. That is ultimate hubris. That is total ego speaking right there. And of course, the same individuals who think that are ultimately disturbed by the alarms as well. They do not like hearing those sounds going off, disrupting their peace, disrupting their Zen meditation, disrupting their TV show, or whatever else that they're constantly being distracted by. Just a, a big routine every day of the same things. And that becomes the rut one gets stuck in. Just this endless circle, just rutting oneself deeper and deeper into the groove of the thing. Yeah, it's groovy, man. Yeah, groovy. Yeah, just keep e keep digging the hole a little bit deeper every single day with that pattern. Because the whole thing is about patterns too. Does one recognize them? Or is one caught in everything else that's its own pattern? So if you don't recognize the patterns, you can't break free of them. That's the point too. It's no different than admitting one has an addiction. If you don't admit that you have an addiction, you can't break free from it. And that includes things like these entertainment devices. If one can't admit that they're addicted to them, addicted to, addicted to scrolling the screen over and over and over again, how many look at their Facebook still every day, just scrolling the shit out of that for hours on end, thinking that it means something? What kind of meaning are you finding in that? Looking at memes. Just treating it all like a joke again. Ha ha ha, look at this meme. It's just awesome. I gotta send that to all my friends now. Yeah, go ahead, keep doing that, and think that's the ultimate meaning, your great ultimate journey, that all of eternity is set up for you and your particular experience just to do that. What an absurdity. But who can see that? No, it's not all just propped up and set up for you to just have these tepid little experiences of meaninglessness. Just looking at screens non-stop every single day, that becomes the pattern. So one has to break free of the patterns, which are very much part of the weapons of mass distraction. Who's a good recognizer of patterns? Pattern recognition is important. It's part of the symbols. It's been part of the language key. Anyone who's worked with the language key understands the patterns. Anyone who's a musician understands patterns as well that's most music 
that exists in this reality. It's just pattern based. And as the years have gone on, the music has just gotten absolutely worse by the day. It's just a bunch of noise, total garbage, just repetitive patterns going into oblivion. There's no feeling, no heart in the vast majority of what's called music. It's just pointless to even bother listening to. So yeah, that's again tied to the big question, where is the heart? Where is the heart in almost anything now? It's just a bunch of artificial, artificial noise and a bunch of fictions. Yeah, so many caught in in reading the next fictional book by whatever author. Again, just wasting your time in these nonsense stories that don't mean anything. They're not giving you anything. They're just keeping you lulled into that same state of sleep and ignoring the alarm, which is within you. Your heart is the alarm. That's what's being sounded right now. Are you listening? Are you sitting in silence and listening to it and becoming disquieted by it, by its message? That's my question to everyone out there, to everyone real who has a real inheritance, which is a real heart. Are you paying attention? Are you rousing yourself out of the pattern of sleep? Or are you just going to wait until it's too late? That's the point about alarms. They're there for a reason. It's not there for nothing. So yeah, I very much am acting as an alarm. That should be very obvious. If it's not obvious, I don't know how to make it more obvious. And I'm not going to stop. Why would I stop acting as an alarm? If it if it also wasn't obvious, the emergency call was done in 2001, 9-11. There it was. The emergency call was made. And guess what? You're dealing with immensities. So yeah, that call is made decades in advance. That's what immensities mean. It's not you call the ambulance, you call 911, and they show up in 10 or 15 minutes. No, you're dealing with eternal immensities. So an emergency of this magnitude, well, that call is done years and years in advance for the preparation of what's to come. But people don't conceptualize things in terms of the big picture. And I mean big, huge, astounding, gargantuan. Use whatever synonym you want. But no one is able to hold that immensity inside of themselves, that kind of vision. It's just not possible. But despite it not being possible, one can make an attempt, at the very least, to try their best to see it. To see it in the correct light. And of course, make one's best attempt to rouse themselves awake from their slumber before it's too late. Is one listening to their heart? The alarm is going off in it. Do you hear it? Do you hear it?